Have you ever tried to prove the existence of God? Do you really know him through Jesus Christ? I want to share some thoughts about this with you this morning. Stay with me. Let's see what we find in the Word of God. I want to start a totally new subject with you this week, and it's something we've been looking at in our Bible study groups, and I found it very fascinating to teach. Now, I can't guarantee that those listening found it fascinating, but we'll see how we go throughout the week. I've been talking on some of the basic doctrines of the Word of God. And first of all, in all our groups, I talked about the doctrine of God, and that's what I want to share with you, the teaching in the Bible about the Lord our God. And first of all, about his existence. Now, you must know something to begin with. You cannot prove the existence of God to anybody, except yourself. You can find him for yourself, you can know he exists for yourself, but you cannot prove his existence to anyone else. Therefore, it is an utter waste of time to sit down and try and argue with an atheist. You're coming from two totally different perspectives, two different concepts. You might as well give up to start with. Let them see the existence of God in you, and then let them ask questions. But don't try to debate them into the kingdom. That's not how it works. And when you come to the Bible, you find the Bible doesn't prove the existence of God. It simply assumes that he exists. We start in the scriptures in Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God. You can't go back any further than that as far as the Christian's concerned. That's where it all began. In the beginning, God. And either you believe that or you don't, and then you have to give some other explanation. My feeling is that most of the explanations I've heard that leave God out don't make sense. And it's only when you bring God in that you can make sense. But that's just a feeling I have. But let's go on it from there. What do we find in the Word of God? I think the closest to it is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6, where we find this. Without faith it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. That's how we find him. You cannot prove the existence of God except for yourself. The Bible never tries. Now, let's go on from here. Assuming you believe he exists, you find that our God is knowable. He is knowable. You can know him. Now, obviously, we can't fully understand him. And whoever it is who's listening to me this morning and has the greatest IQ, let me tell you, you can study God for the rest of your life and you'll still find more to study. You'll never exhaust it because he is so great. In Job, we hear one of Job's friends speaking. In chapter 11 and verse 7, Can you fathom the mysteries of God? Or can you? Can you probe the limits of the Almighty? No, in actual fact, you can't. He is so great, there's so much more for us to study, that we only just go across the surface. But by the same token, we can see God, for example, in nature. We can see him in Jesus Christ, and we can find him by the Holy Spirit. So let's look at this for a minute. First of all, in Psalm 19, verse 1, we find that David talks about nature, which is not surprising. He was a shepherd. He understood nature. He spent his life there, and he says this, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. You look up into a clear sky when there's absolutely nothing but stars, and you look at the wonder of our God's work. The skies proclaim our God. The absolute wonder of him, the size of him, the immensity of him. There's so much to see when you look at the open sky. We find him in nature. But there's a step further that I want you to take. If you have a Bible, turn with me to Romans 1, 19. If you don't, try and write these verses down and look at them when you get home. Romans 19, Romans 1, 19 and verse 20 as well. It says in verse 18, the anger of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men 
who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Now listen to 19. Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. Do you get that? Since the creation of the world, God has been clearly seen through, the, in, through all his creation, being understood from what has been made, so that men are without excuse. There is nobody living, says the word of God, who is without excuse, because God reveals himself to man. Now, obviously, we don't know how God reveals himself to someone who's never heard of him, never been taught about him, but the Bible says that happens. And therefore, the only one who can judge mankind is God himself. God himself is the only one who knows what he's revealed. God himself is the only one who knows how each individual has responded. And remember, we're told there are over four billion people alive today. Every one of them has God revealing himself to them in some way. And it is according to their response. Now, if they have never heard of Jesus Christ, they will not be judged by Jesus Christ, but they will be judged by the response they've made. Now, remember that. I believe I shared with you the fantastic story that Malcolm Smith tells. He went to Africa, and he went to different mission stations, and he went into the heart of the bush, and every so often he'd say to the missionaries, let me meet your first Christian convert. And in one village, this old man of 80 years of age came to him with an interpreter, and Malcolm said to him, how did you find Christ? It's so simple, it's wonderful. Listen to this. He said, I went into the witch doctor's hut, and we had to worship the things we made in the village. You remember that? We made them in the village with our own hands. And he said, this didn't make sense to me. Why did we worship something we'd made? So he said, I looked at the bush, and the bush supplied me with food, and the bush supplied me with clothes, and water came through rain, and there was a sunshine, and I began to think that there was something or someone behind the bush, behind nature, behind what I was receiving. Now that's good theology. So this man went into the bush and worshipped the God he didn't know and did it for five years. And then one day, the whole area where he was worshipping was lit up and God spoke to him. He said, I will send someone to your village and they will tell you my name. One month later, the first lady missionary entered that village. And God had said, they'll be wearing white and carrying a black book. Into that village came a lady missionary dressed in a white dress, carrying a black Bible. Can you imagine her shock as that man ran and threw his arms around her neck and said, tell me his name. His name is Jesus. And he had found him through nature. That's what he's talking about in Romans 1, 19 and 20. Also, we know Jesus we know God in Jesus Christ. Listen to Romans 17, verse 3. It says, Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. We can know God. We can have a personal relationship with the Lord our God. And it is through Jesus Christ. Let's go back a bit. John chapter 1 and verse 18. John 1, 18, I read this, and let me read it to you. No one has ever seen God, but God the only Son, who is at the Father's side and has made him known. Jesus Christ has made God known to us. That's how we find him. You will never find God fully unless you find him in Jesus Christ, and in Jesus you can find everything you'll ever want to know about God our Father, God the Creator. And then again, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 20. 1 John 5, 20. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we're in Him who is true, even in the Son, Jesus Christ. Yes, we know the God who is true, 
because we know him in and through Jesus Christ. That's fantastic. Therefore, the better you get to know Jesus, the more clearly you know God your Father. And conversely, if you do not know Jesus Christ, you do not know God the Father. This is one of the reasons Jesus came. Yes, of course he came to reveal the Father to us. We know that. It's the most wonderful fact. Jesus died upon the cross, but first of all, he revealed the Father to us. Throughout his life, throughout everything he said, throughout everything he was, Jesus revealed God. Do you know him? Jesus said, no one comes to the Father but by me. Have you come to God your Father? You find him in Jesus. But also the Holy Spirit comes in. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11. Let me read to you. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So it is the Holy Spirit who reveals the thoughts of God to mankind. So we can find God in nature, and obviously David did. We can find God in and through Jesus Christ, and there we find a complete revelation. And we find God through the work of the Holy Spirit. And remember, every one of you listening to my voice, who's accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. Now, he's only able to do what you allow him to do. He's only able to work according to how surrendered you are to him. But if you've truly given him everything, he can reveal even the thoughts of God to you. This is his work in our lives. Yes, I can know God. I can know him for myself. And I can live him before other people, but I cannot prove him to anyone. So don't waste your time trying to talk someone into the kingdom of God. Live it, love them, and lead them to him. And then they'll find him for themselves. And then they'll be convinced. Yes, you can know God. Yes, you can converse with God. But if you're not a Christian, you do not have the Holy Spirit. And the only thing you're going to hear from the Lord your God is that you need a Savior. And the name of the Savior is Jesus. Be sure you find him. Be sure you accept him. Because he wants to enter your life today.